I made this bomber seat in my last video using a very basic tool set, and I think it came out great. Today I want to refine some of the details. The joints on this have an overlap fit, and while that's okay, I think it would look a lot more finished if the edges fit flush. So I'm going to step these edges with a beading machine. I want to put a bunch of holes in it because holes are cool. And the last thing I'll do is to reinforce the edge with metal. I put a set of step dies in my beading machine and I've adjusted them so it will step the metal down one material thickness. So I'll be using the guide built into the machine to get the right edge distance. I'm making a three quarter inch wide step. So I'll hold the metal against the guide and roll it through. And that gives us a nice clean step. Stepping the edges so your panels fit flush is one of those small details that can give your work a more professional look. Now let's take a look at putting a hole pattern in the center panels. There are many ways to lay out holes. One of my favorite ways is to cut little discs of chipboard and these can be easily arranged in whatever pattern you might like. And it's good to try a number of different patterns to find what you really like. There's a couple of things you should watch out for. You need to maintain enough edge distance. If you get the holes too close to the edge it can distort the edge. Also, on these edges I have an overlap, so the curled edge of the hole has to be far enough away so it doesn't interfere with that overlapped area. So I've actually made a drawing for this seat that has the whole layout completed in a staggered pattern. So I'm going to use that drawing to lay out the holes for this seat. I'm going to get all the edges lined up and I'll use tape to keep this from shifting as I mark the hole centers. And it's really the centers of the holes that is most important. So I'll use the center punch to mark the center of each of these holes. And I'll do a similar layout on this side as well. I'm going to drill a pilot hole in each of these hole locations. And you can see I've elevated my workpiece with wooden blocks. That's so I can get it up off the table. So when I break through with the drill, it won't drill into my table. So I'm using a pilot drill here. So the pilot holes are all done. I'm going to use a step drill to move this hole size up to a half inch. And this particular step drill goes up to much larger than that. So I've used a piece of tape to mark how far I'll go, so I only go to a half inch hole. I'm going to use the slower speed in my drill because this is a larger hole size. So there's our half inch hole. And this is a decent way to make holes, but there is a better way that I'll show you next. For the next holes, I'm going to use what's called an annular cutter. And this is a lot faster because we're only cutting the perimeter of the hole. It doesn't have to hog out all the metal in the center. This is a lot faster in a drill press as well. But even when you're hand drilling, there's some time savings. So let's drill a couple of holes with this. So all the half inch holes are finished. I'll clean the chips off this part, then we'll get ready to use the punch and flare dies for the full size holes. I'll be using the two inch punch and flare die set made by Mittler Brothers. I like these because they punch the hole and then curl the edge all in one shot. So I like to put the receiver in a vise to hold it stationary. So I'll get this snugged up pretty well. Then I put some blocks on my bench to support the part and we'll get the first hole centered on the receiver. 
and there is a draw bolt that draws the dies together. These bolts take a lot of force, so a little oil on the threads really helps. Then I'll get that inserted in the threaded part of the receiver, and I'll tighten this with a wrench. So the slug has just broken through. Now I'll keep going while it curls the edge. And we want to bring that up pretty snug. That'll flatten out the metal around the curled edge. I think that should do it. So we'll disassemble this. Sometimes it takes a little tap to release the die. So there's our first hole, and there's 22 more to go. So there's the last hole. Let's pull this apart and take a look. Well, I think that looks really nice. So one last thing I want to do before I reassemble the seat is to deburr these edges. The punches leave sort of a sharpness on the edge, and this is the best time to fix that. I've got a deburring tool here that'll make fast work of cleaning up these holes. I've clamped the part down so I can put some good steady pressure on it. And it just takes a couple of laps around the edges. And that does an excellent job of cleaning up the burr. I think the holes really transform the look of this seat. I'm really starting to like it a lot. So the last step is I want to cap this edge. I found this U-channel. It's designed to cover the edge of expanded metal or perforated metal, and it's just the right size to go over the edge of our bomber seat. So the tricky part, of course, is going to be to put the bends in it. One in this plane, and a couple in this plane. That's what we'll do next. This channel turned out to be a lot more difficult to bend than I expected. I've tried bending it cold freehand. I've tried bending it pulled over a form. I tried heating it to bend it. And there are problems with each of those techniques. The problems are the gap between the flanges wants to either close down or open up. And it's very difficult to keep the material straight. So I developed a way that works pretty well. I've set up an arbor press with two round bars on the bottom and a large round ram on the top. And if I put the material between these and just put a little pressure on it, I can make it bend pretty easily. And I have fine control over how the bending works. So you can see I'm having no problem putting a bend in the part. And if I overbend it, I can put it in the other way and I can take the bend out. To control the straightness, I've set up a vise with a spacer between the jaws. So this is a snug fit between the jaws. And if any curve starts occurring in it, I can tap this in to straighten it out. I can make it move either way. And if the gap between the flanges gets too small, I can wedge a small screwdriver into the gap and just wiggle it sideways to open that up. So these are the techniques that give me control with bending the bar, and we're going to make the shapes to fit all around the seat now. I've made a pattern out of steel, and I'll use the tape line on this to guide me as I shape the metal. So the tape is about 5 sixteenths of an inch wide, and I'm going to set it up so that the inner flange just touches the inner edge of the tape. And I have a center line I'll start from. So I'll clamp this pattern into place on my table. I'll make the first bend right in the center. I'm sitting so the metal is more at eye level. I can get a better sense of how it's going when it's at eye level. So we'll put just a few bends in this near the center and then check it against our pattern. I know it needs a lot more bend but we'll see how much more. 
And let's straighten this out a little bit. It's just starting to take on a small curve. It's better to fix it when the deviations are small rather than let them get large. Okay, that looks pretty good. So I'll bend this some more. I'll check it against the pattern. Still needs a bit more, but let's check the straightness. So far, so good. I'll bend it some more. I'll test the bend against my pattern. It's getting close, but it still does need a little more curving. I'll do some straightening on this. And I need to open that gap up just a tiny bit in a couple of areas. That's looking really good. And now for the first time I can fit this over the edge of the pattern. So you can see I've got a very nice fit so far. And I'll continue the fitting up toward the top end first. So it needs to start bending down from this point. So it's looking really good on the top. I'll slip this over the edge of the pattern so you can see the fit we have. So I think you can see it's coming right up to the edge of that tape line, just where we want it. So the top part of this is pretty well taken care of, and we'll continue the shaping into the bottom. So that's fitting against the tape line just perfectly. I intentionally left a lot of extra material here because I need the leverage to make the bend in this direction. I'll take this opportunity to sand any small scratches off this edge. And now I can curl the ends of this part. There's a double thickness in this area, and the cap strip won't fit over that. So I need to notch this away. So I'll put a piece of the cap strip into place as a guide, and put a straight edge next to that. And then I'll use a marker pen to show where this needs to be notched out. So I'll trim this corner in the four locations where it's needed. It's time to bend the curl on the ends of this cap strip now. And I did a test piece to learn some things about the process. The first thing I learned is the diameter I need to bend it around. And it turns out a four and a half inch diameter is just about perfect. And the next thing I needed to know is where the bend needs to start from. So what I did is I laid this sheet metal piece on a table and found the tangent point where the curve starts. And I made a dark line on the part where the curve needs to start. Then I made a fixture. What this fixture does is it holds this tube in a proper orientation. So there's a backstop that prevents it from moving. And I found the tangent point for the tube. I made a line there. Then I made a cutout in the bottom part of this, which locates this in and out. And the groove is cut such that when it's tied against the groove here, this line is in alignment with the center part of the tube. So that's all I really need to know. I also need to space this part up properly. The material I'm bending is 3 16 of an inch thick. So I need to have spacers that will keep this tube from crushing the cap strip when I clamp it down. The material itself will form the distance I need here. And I put a 3 16 spacer on the back side that will support the back part of the tube. So we're almost ready to bend this now. There's one more thing I need to do. This U-shaped channel would be crushed if I just bent it. So what I'm going to do to prevent that is to put a piece of 1 16th material inside the groove. 
and this will prevent it from being crushed. So I'll get this clamped into place now. And I'll put a lever on this to give me some more leverage. And we'll bend this up as far as it needs to go. So that should be just about perfect. I'll unclamp this. And the spacer I put in the groove has become trapped now, but I found a pretty easy way to get it out. I'll use a pair of vice grip pliers and you just sort of turn the pliers sideways and that helps to pull the metal strip out. So I'll clear off my table and we'll try this into place. I had to do a little bit of adjusting on this curve, but it's fitting perfectly now. Let me slip these together so you can see the fit that we have. So it's fitting very snugly all the way around to this point. And of course I need to do something similar on this side. Now it turns out I can't use the same fixture because the curve is different on both ends and the distance from this line to the curve is different. So I'll make another fixture very similar to the first one. Once that's done, I'll bend the front end of both parts. I made the bending fixture for the front part of the seat, so let's get ready to make this bend now. I'll get this piece located in the fixture. I'll get the tube clamped into place. And I'll put a tube over this for more leverage. And we'll make our bend. Just like before, I'll use a pair of vice grips to pull this piece of aluminum out. And now I'll check the fit against the side of the seat. So the fit's not bad, but I can see it needs a little adjustment right here. I need to add to the bend right at this point. So I'll mark where the bend needs to increase. Then I'll put this back in the bending fixture and just give it a light little tug. Test it again. Maybe just a little bit more right here. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. So I'm going to get this tapped into place now. So I have it slipped in tightly on the bottom. Let's get the top into place. So I have a nice snug fit up all the way around the perimeter. I've used an orbital sander on this cap strip to get any scratches out of it and we're getting close to the final assembly. So I'm going to put this back on the seat side. Get it snugged up nice and tight. Then I'm going to assemble this back on the seat back and mark where these ends need to be trimmed. I have the other side put together to streamline that operation. So I'm going to put a mark here and here and that will show me exactly where to trim these in. I have the cap strips trimmed and the seat assembled. I've also cut the cap strips that fit on the center part of the seat. I'll get this one positioned. I'll hold this with clamps and I'm going to fasten these cap strips with small flathead screws. They could be tack welded but I'll use screws to keep this really simple. I'll position the screws three quarters of an inch away from the seams. I'll center punch where they go. I'm going to put the screws in the straight part first. I'll use the tap drill size for the screw. Now I'll countersink the holes. I'll test the size of the countersink using the head of the screw.
That one looks pretty good. And now I'll thread the holes with a 440 tap. Now the holes are tapped, and I'll use a hex key to tighten the screws. So I'll tap this into place so it's aligned perfectly with the front part. And I'll clamp it into place so it can't move as I'm drilling and tapping. And I'll center punch for the drill and drill through with the tap size drill. Then I'll countersink the hole. Now I can tap the hole. And now I'll put the screw into place. So I'll do the same thing to each of the other corners. The screws on the ends hold the edge cap securely, but just to make sure it can't work loose over time, I'm going to put a third screw right in the inside curve here. So the first step is I want to tap this down to make sure it's snug against the seat side. Okay, and that's not moving, so that's as far as it'll go. And just for convenience, I'll clamp it to the edge of my bench. And now I'll center punch for the screw. And I'll drill through with the tap drill. And then I'll put the screw into place. So with three screws in place, this edge cap isn't going anywhere. It's held very securely. So I'll put a screw on the other side, and then I can do the final assembly. So it's just a few tweaks. We've taken a simple bomber seat and brought it to the next level. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and I encourage you to take on a project like this yourself. I love making these videos, and I'm honored that you're watching. Please like subscribe, and click the bell to be notified about new videos. I read every comment, and I do my best to answer all questions. If you like what I'm doing, please click the Patreon link and become one of the great people who help me create new videos.